morning. Welcome to the Delhi Avenue Church. Court. Church. Here in Court for the U.S. Avenue, all right. Uh, folks, uh, here we go to church. I'll be back. service this morning. We do also welcome those who are joining us on our live feeds as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you with open hearts, seeking your presence in this sacred place. Gather us together as one, uniting our thoughts and spirits in your love. Help us to set aside the worries of our day, that we may fully receive the peace you offer. Guide our words and actions that they may reflect your grace and compassion. Let this time be a true blessing to all who are gathered here today. In your most precious and holy name, amen. Please stand as you're able for our call to worship. Put on the helmet of salvation, for God has given us the gift of protection. We wear the helmet of salvation. In times of doubt and uncertainty, may this helmet guard our minds with the assurance of God's love. We trust in God's power to renew our lives and strengthen our faith. Together, let us 
lift our voices in praise, wearing the helmet of salvation as a sign of our hope. Present them in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. That is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears 
to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our second hymn, number 473, Leave Me, Lord, and we will sing it through two times. Psalter reading for this morning is on page 752 of your hymnal. We will be singing in response to, so we'll have Nancy play it through first, and then we'll sing it. And again, I will read the regular type, you will read the bold face. to the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let the Lord rescue him, for the Lord delights in him. Upon you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. My heart 
is like wax. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. Indeed, dogs surround me. I can count all my venoms. They divide my garments among them. in the great, great congregation. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to the people yet unborn. Paul also tells us to put on a helmet of the hope 
of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for ob obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been issued our helmet of salvation. Salvation is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. We can be condemned by ourselves, but we can't save ourselves. There are no do-it-yourself Christians. William Stoddard once said, Salvation is not the end of our journey, but the end of our wandering. Neither is it the end to our battle with sin. The battlefield of the mind is constantly under assault. The devil would like to debilitate us by poisoning our minds. Falsehood comes in many subtle forms. It could be a university professor who ridicules biblical teaching, a television program that makes fun of faith, the influence of an unbelieving friend, a book that casts doubt on a person and work of Christ or even a website that encourages readers to live the life that they want. Such thinking blinds people of the truth. The psalmist writes in Psalm 103, I'm sorry, 101, verse 3, I will set no wicked or unclean thing before my eyes. We need to appraise the messages that complete for our ascent and reject false messages. We also need to be able to defend the truth that we profess. Proverbs 15, 14 does warn us that the mind of one has the understanding of knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly. Our enemy wants to tear us down with negativity. We need to guard our minds. We cannot afford the consequences of every negative thought that runs through our minds. 2 Corinthians 11 states, As the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts can be led astray from the sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Sometimes what we want to see is not always right. We jump to conclusions. We have blind spots and we miss the big picture. When we're having trouble controlling our thoughts, when we're not seeing clearly, we need to stop. We need to go to God in prayer. We need to dive into his word and go to a trusted friend for encouragement. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Shakespeare's Hamlet complains that Denmark is nothing but a prison, but then admits that his thinking makes it so. Hamlet is a prisoner of his perception, and in his case, there were consequences. We see life not as it is, but as we are. Where do destructive thoughts lead us? Roman soldiers were well armed, but the empire was imploding. How did Rome fall? Not from external threats, but from internal decay. The decline of Rome is credited to several factors. A decline in morals, rampant materialism, a wage gap between the affluent and the poor, an obsession with sex, freakishness in the arts, and political corruption. Some historians also blame Christianity, which in practice would have eliminated all the other causes of decline. The enemy would like to deceive and fill our minds with doubts. He is the father of lies. So what are some of the lies that we believe? My indulgence really isn't that bad. I'm not responsible for my actions. I can't help being the way that I am. I have the right to be angry. I can't be happy unless things go my way. I'm stupid. I'm a loser. 
my unhappiness is someone else's fault. And there are many more. Perhaps you might draw your own list. Such lies are what Alcoholics Anonymous calls, Jerry. Most lies what uh, is selfish and self, oh God, you have, you have They to, call them stinking, stinking, stinking. stinking. Got it. Okay. If I, we are to defeat the stronghold of lies. Satan's lies, lies, we must saturate our minds with God's word and replace the lies with truth that will set us free. Are we truly soldiers of the cross? Think, think, think. We all know people who are confused about their spiritual condition, who lack assurance of their salvation. If we lose the hope of heaven, we have little hope of dealing with our present trials. The helmet of salvation includes a confident assurance in the security, a no-so salvation. God's plan doesn't leave us wondering if we're going to make it to heaven or not. Assurance is our birthright based on God's promises. God's warriors need a mindset of victory. A defeatist attitude will get us nowhere. When Moses sent soldiers into Canaan to conduct a recognizance mission, their threat assessment was divided. After them were confident that Israel would be successful, while on the other hand, the other half were fearful of the enemy's strengths and fortifications. Joshua and Caleb urged Moses in Numbers 13, let us go up at once and possess the land, for we are able to conquer it. We need this steadfast confidence. The battle lines are drawn. Let's not be caught in face shamed when our commanding officer Isaiah 4, 6 warns, My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. My friends, are you discouraged? Don't be. We're all on the winning team. Romans 8, 37 says, We are more than conquerors. Putting on the helmet of salvation means that victory is certain. Let the enemy do his worst. He can never separate us from the love of God. One day, all our battles will be over. One day, we will exchange our helmets for crowns of victory as we reach the shores of an unending praise. Hoorah! Hoorah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift this morning of your word which speaks truth and light into our lives. May the message that we receive today take root in our hearts and transform us from within. Help us to carry your word into the world, living out its teachings in our actions and words. Let it guide us in all that we do, that we may be a reflection of your love and grace. Amen. I'm always a little bit leery about bringing up the offering, because I know we're small, but we are mighty. But there's always something in the offering plate every week. I don't know who gives what. All, I'm, all I get from Bob is a total. But there is something every week in the offering plate, and I appreciate that. So with grateful hearts, we do become before God recognizing everything that he has given us. So it's up to us to give back a portion of these blessings, a sign of our gratitude and trust in his provision. So our gifts today, may they be used to bring hope, healing, and love to those in need. Give joyfully and generously, knowing that God will use our offerings to make a difference in Clarksburg, Harrison County, West Virginia, and the world. Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the gifts that are in the offering plates or will be there before the end of the service. 
you have poured so much into our lives. Blessings beyond measure. These offerings that we give to you today, we ask that you bless and multiply them for your work in the world. May they be a source of hope and comfort to those who are in need and an expression of your love to all, guiding us in using these resources wisely, that they may bring glory to your name with grateful hearts. We dedicate our gifts to you, trusting in your goodness and grace. Amen. Please stand as you're able for our doxology number 94. A uh, close friend of mine, his name's uh, Corey Gaiman. Um, he is currently in the hospital in um, our correction at uh, Los Angeles, California. I'll get it right. Also, I'd like to make an apology. You kind of put me on the spot, and my mind wasn't thinking AA at the point. You're fine. You're fine. You know, if I can bring it up, I will. <laughs> yeah. I do have a praise myself. Sure, Two friends of mine, uh, they were at a nurses conference in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, went to one of the chapels up there and got married. Oh. 
feature. Thank you for your unwavering love that meets us exactly where we are. In times of doubt and struggle, you stand by us, offering your grace and mercy without end. Today we ask that you help us put on our helmet of salvation, protect our minds from the fears and uncertainties that can overwhelm us. Lord, as we wear this helmet, Remind us that our salvation is secure in you. Shield our thoughts from negativity, doubt, and the lies that tell us we are not enough. Let your truth be our guide, giving us the confidence to trust in your plan for our lives. When we feel vulnerable or lost, may this helmet be a constant reminder of your promise to never leave us or forsake us. Merciful God, we come before you in confession, knowing that we often fall short of your will for our lives. We admit that our thoughts are not always aligned with your ways, and we allow worry, pride, and selfish desires to take control. Forgive us, Lord, when we fail to see the world through the eyes of your love and grace. We confess that we not always have trusted in your protection of your salvation, but sometimes we choose instead to rely on our own strength. Help us to release our doubts and fears to you, trusting that you hold things in your hands. Create in us a new mind, renewed and transformed by the power of your spirit. As we wear the helmet of salvation, let it be a sign to our commitment to follow you in all that we do. Give us the courage to think and act in ways that reflect your love to others. Lord, we lift up those who are struggling today, those who feel burdened by life's challenges, weighted down by sorrow. May they find comfort and peace in knowing that their salvation rests in you alone. Strengthen their hearts, guide their thoughts, and remind them that they are deeply loved by you. As we walk forward in faith, united as your people, let your love and grace guide our every step. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 577. Please stand as your people.
for our scholarship um, that we award uh, every fall. Uh, so I ask Timothy to come forward. He knew he was coming up here. They asked me if I was going to have you say anything. So he said, no, he's done. So, so Timothy was uh, awarded the $1,000 scholarship for the uh, academic year of 2024-25. Um, he is, told me this morning, he's finishing up his uh, undergraduate degree and will be continuing on into his master's degree at Liberty uh, next year. So uh, won't you give him a round of applause. You may be seated. I should have had you sit before that, but I didn't. Okay, just a couple of announcements uh, for the week. Um, we were notified by Molly today that she is suspending the grief share for the remainder of the fall. Um, she doesn't know when she'll be able to pick it back up. Um, and she contacted them, and she can't have a substitute leader unless they go through all the training and have taken the grief share before. So the rest of the grief share for third through November has been postponed. She's hoping by spring. Okay. Uh, starting tomorrow, 10 to 2, and also on Tuesday, 10 to 2, and also on Thursday, 10 to 2, as well as next week and the, the next week, um, we have partnered with Burlington United Methodist Family Services, Missy upstairs. Um, she is going to be here taking collections for Hurricane Relief. Uh, you may have seen the post on Facebook of what she is collecting. Uh, that will be in your bulletin next week because of, we didn't get the list until after the bulletin for print this week. So uh, things like cleaning supplies, shovels, diapers and wipes, paper towels, toilet paper, things like that. Um, so we'll, she's going to be collecting them for three weeks. She will be here in the church taking the collections. So if anybody's asking who's taking up for hurricane relief, so send them our way. Okay. Um, four bags of candy. It's pretty good. Uh, I talked to Terry who was, yeah, there's another one. Carla's got one from sitting at home for a week or two. Uh, but I talked to Terry uh, from Rock, Paper, Scissors. She's involved with the uh, Young Men's Association, she was ecstatic about the candy, that we were doing that for them. Uh, they were, the boys were adamant about candy, not candy, on to friends, feeding friends on the 30th. Uh, and they were worried about having enough money to supply the dinner and the candy, so I said, uh, Bailey will take care of the candy. So, uh, still bring it in. Got this week, next week, and the 27th, uh, because the dinner is on the 30th that they are serving. Um, I didn't mention it last week, it kind of slipped my mind, but Happy Andy Sunday. This is the day where we collect underwear and socks uh, for our less fortunate. But we're going to run this for as long as we need to. Uh, all that we give, we're going to give to the warming shelter at First United Methodist Church when they start having that. They're always looking for um, new underwear, new socks, uh, thermals, things like that. So. When you're out starting your Christmas shopping, and yes, Christmas is just a couple months away, uh, pick up some and bring in uh, to give to the shelter. Uh, we're still collecting shoes for the Souls for Souls, double bag grocery bags, prescription bottles. Holly brought me two more houses full of tabs today. So she says, empty them and I'll bring you more. So uh, we do appreciate that. Are there any other announcements that I need to? Oh. Leadership Council, Tuesday night at 6.30. We'll probably meet in the park. Those Girl Scouts will be in the sewing room. Okay, is that all? Big stand for a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you, surrounding your life with grace and peace. As you go forth, put on your helmet of salvation. Guard your mind with the assurance that God's love and protection is with you. Let your thoughts be filled with hope, knowing that your salvation is secure in Christ. May you be strengthened in faith, empowered to share God's light with this world. Go in peace to love and serve 
always wearing the armor of God's saving grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks, for stopping by Stelling out of this church. Of course, for us being a thing. Yes, we'll get this in one day. So that's a good song. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Sarah Lamp, Joe Passman, Lance Kid, I mean, the, the, yeah, the Lance Kids, uh, David Hart Sr. I know I like to stop by this video. David Coleman, I like to stop by this video. How are you guys around the world? Around the world from the North Pole to the South Pole, Asia, Europe, Africa, Greenland. All the islands, can't name y'all, but do try <laughs> every week. North, Central America, South America, North America, North America, wherever you are in your part of the world, thank you for stopping by. I always appreciate that every week. Peace, the race for peace, aloha. We still have men and women, so we're on a branch of this one today. And friends, friends, we'll talk to y'all again soon. We'll come to that. We'll let it go this time. Grace's Father, thank you for the day of the main blessing to give us our people with this one. Grace's Father, bless this video and the way and the way it's supposed to be blessed. The way you want it to be blessed. Grace's Father, we thank you and honor you for everything you do for us. We appreciate you and what you do for us every week here at Stone Up Memphis Church. And we appreciate what this video does for the world. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do and you do and your blessings that you give. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now as our Lord and Savior, the Son, the Lord, the Son, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be by name. Thy kingdom come, who will be down on earth and in heaven. Because it's there, never, and forgive us our trespasses. For those trespasses, not to us. But he's not to take him, but there is no one. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate it. Peace out. We'll talk to you all again later. Thank you.